guys, Nerd King 101 here, and today we are going to be doing a review of the Bleach live action movie that was recently released on Netflix. Now I did a live reaction stream to this movie that you can check out in the description box down below. And just be warned, this video will contain spoilers, so if you had not seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, do not watch this video, click off and go watch it. But let's get into the Bleach live action movie. I want to start off this review by just reminding everybody that live action anime adaptations don't have a great reputation. This movie is definitely not the worst live action anime adaptation of all time, but it's not very good. A lot of the praise this movie is getting, in my opinion, comes from how low the standard is. But if you hold it to the standard of a regular movie, it just does not hold up. My first major complaint is that in the scene when Masaki Kurosaki Ichigo's mother died, Ichigo had black hair, but then later on, like five seconds later, he's older and he has orange hair. The actor portraying young Ichigo looks absolutely nothing like the actor playing older Ichigo. They don't even have the same hair color. Now, I understand that they're going for everybody kind of looking like regular Japanese people, especially with characters like Orihime having black hair, but that goes on to a problem I have with this movie. Why is Ichigo the only person with weird hair? It's just weird to me that all the original kids, they kept Ichigo's orange hair, but then characters like Orihime, whose hair was a unique part of her character that separated her from other characters, is just black. Like everybody else. If you're going to go ahead and give people like Ichigo their crazy anime orange hair and people like Renji kick red hair, then why can't Orihime have orange hair? Why can't Yuzu be blonde? But aside for that, when it comes to the actual casting, the acting was pretty solid. It wasn't bad. The characters looked decent. But the movie does follow this trend of having the actors try to mimic mannerisms from their anime and manga counterparts, which just doesn't work in live action. Sometimes Sometimes a real actor mimicking an anime character can work, but sometimes, as in the case in this movie, it can make them look ridiculous. There is a scene in this movie where Rukia just points at Ichigo super abruptly, and it looks so weird. Ichigo's movements especially seem like they're trying to be copied from the anime and the manga, and it just looks weird. Also, all the shots of the characters interacting in the classroom are always shot at all the same angles from the same exact positions. Like, Orihime almost always walks over to the same spot when she's talking to Ichigo, and she's almost always sitting in the same spot in the same position. It looks really weird. It's almost like there wasn't a full classroom set. Like, they only created a set for that one part of the classroom. It just looks weird to see these characters interacting in the exact same way, in the exact same spot, multiple times. I'm going to be honest, the CGI in this movie isn't very good. The hollows actually look decent, but the actual CGI for like when characters are getting knocked around and Renji Shikai at the end just don't look good. Renji Shikai especially looks really, really fake. It's almost like a, most of the money went into making sure the hollows looked good. And even the hollows didn't look fantastic. I mean, they looked passable, I guess, but not great. Honestly, everything in this movie looks pretty fake, besides for Ichigo's sword, which even that looks pretty ridiculous. But my biggest problem with the movie is probably the way events play out in it in terms of their order. You see, this movie is an adaptation of the Substitute Story Bro arc, or the Substitute Shinigami arc, and instead of Byakuya and Renji showing up at the end and not even alluding to them the whole film, they are pretty much introduced halfway through, if not even before that. Ichigo made aware pretty early in the film that Rukia had committed a felony by giving Ichigo her powers, and Ichigo finding out from Renji and Byakuya himself early in the story kind of lessens the impact of the reveal. The reason the reveal works so well in the anime and the manga is that Ichigo and Rukia have been building a friendship for a long time in the story, and then the guy just go up and Rukia disappeared, and they fight Ichigo, and they're like, we're gonna kill Rukia, and they leave, and then it ends. 
And then the viewers left wondering after Ichigo left defeated where it's going to go next. You could have ended the movie there, but they didn't. They also build up Grand Fister to be this massive, massive threat that's like a really big deal. Like they, it kind of implies he's like above captain level or something. Like nobody can deal with the great Grand Fisher. And when Byakuya and Renji come to get Rukia, Ichigo makes like a deal with them that if he can kill Grand Fisher, they'll have to let Rukia go, which doesn't make make any sense. Like, Rukia committed a felony. Why would they let her off the hook just because you killed some hollow? Like, that's not how that works, and the logic there doesn't make any sense. And even then, we're not really shown anything to give us the reason to believe Ichigo likes or cares about Rukia. In fact, I'll be honest, Ichigo and Rukia don't treat each other very well in this movie. They're both pretty mean to each other. Rukia tries to hide the fact that Ichigo is in danger because he has her power from him, which is really weird. She implies that if she takes her power back from Ichigo right away when the movie is beginning that he would die. Ichigo is just kind of rude to her, telling her things like he doesn't care if she can't go back to the Soul Society and she can make it in this world. So honestly, I don't really buy this friendship they seem to have. Renji and Byakuya are also horribly unlikable in this. Like, they're almost like racist towards humans. Like, they think humans are like beneath them. And they're really like, I don't know if racist is the right word, but it's really really weird and it makes them really unlikable. Like, it ruins the live-action versions in this universe of Renji and Byakuya. Also, as I stated earlier, the movie is put together in a really weird way, where one, the story is a lot less compelling than it is in the anime and the manga, and two, I also found it a little hard to follow because the events were put in such a strange order. Like, after watching this movie, I could honestly not Telling you the exact order the thing happens in it. Because the order made very little sense. Then there's the ending fight between Ichigo and Renji, which is just really bad looking. Like the CGI is really bad on Dobby Maru. I will admit I did really get a kick out of seeing Renji go roar Dobby Maru in live action of the transformation of the sword. I liked that. You can see it in my live reaction and I kind of fanboyed a little bit of that. But then the CGI for when Dobby Maru is extending just looks really bad. He's also not trying to like cut Ichigo with it. He like uses it to like throw cards at him and it's really weird. You know, instead of just slamming it through his chest and cutting him multiple times with the pieces, he doesn't do that. And then Ichigo, when he gets injured, he has these weird like rashes on his body. They're not like blood, they're like rashes. And I was talking about it in the stream, it looks really weird. Like, there's a couple points where he bleeds, especially when the Akunya cuts him, but overall, it's mostly just these weird, like, pimples all over his face, and it looks really gross and weird. I'm not really sure what it was, but it was really bad makeup or whatever, cosmetics or whatever the hell that was supposed to be. Then the scene at the end with Rukia, like, stabbing Ichigo, taking her power back, and erasing his memory is just weird, and it doesn't make any sense. First of all, she is so obviously lying with everything Think she's saying it's amazing that Byakuya and Renji accept it. And by amazing, I mean it just doesn't make any sense. Like, she's like almost crying. Like, you can hear her voice cracking up. Like, the actress did a good job, but I'm not sure what she was going for. Because if she was trying to make it seem like she was fooling Byakuya and Renji, she failed because she's obviously lying. But she starts talking about how much better she is than humans and all that. I, I bought it for like a second, and then she started talking to Ichigo, and she was almost like crying, and I was like, well, she wouldn't be crying if she thought she was a superior being to him. And then when she takes her power back, he, like, loses her memory of her, and it ends on this really weird cliffhanger of him and Orohime smiling at each other, like, they're, like, flirting a little bit, and he looks in a book, and he sees, like, a message that she had written earlier, and he, like, remembers her, or at least it's implied. It's really, really weird. And because it's not like the canon, where he was immediately rescued by Urahana after the fight, and they immediately started planning to save Rukia, and it's instead him forgetting she even exists. It kind of rendered the entire movie retrospectively pointless. Like, what was the point of this movie if Ichigo forgets any development he has throughout the movie? And honestly, the only thing I really think is, like, really good about this movie is Ryu. Ryu is really cool in this, to be completely honest with you. Like, there's still stupid stuff in this movie with Ryu. Like, he says his goal is to exterminate and kill Soul Reapers and Hollows. 
But then he also revealed he knows Urahara and knows he's an ex Soul Reaper, but they, he hasn't tried to kill him yet. So that's really weird. But I mean, Uriu Quincy bow looks really cool in this. The Reishi arrows look cool. The bow especially look really cool. It doesn't look ridiculous on him. They actually took a concept from the anime and the manga with, with him having a pure Reishi bow. And gave him like an actual prop. Like an actual bow. And gave him like Reishi arrows. And the prop of bow looks really cool. Another decent thing about the movie is that the choreography, especially for some of the parts with the Renji and Ichigo fight, when you're just fighting with regular swords, it's good. The problem is that a Bleach fight shouldn't just be two random people with swords fighting normally. It should be people with swords that have powers fighting, and that's not what it is. It's just then having a regular sword fight, and for a regular sword fight, it looks fine. But for a Bleach fight, in live action, it's disappointing. Also, something I kind of liked was the training stuff with Ishio and Rukia. Some of the moments in there, a couple small ones, were a little funny. Like, I did enjoy the scene of Ichigo getting hit with all the baseballs or whatever those were as Rukia was shooting them out of the machine. The entire sequence is pointless, and I don't know why he needs to train in his human form to get his Soul Reaper form stronger. I find that to be kind of illogical. I don't really think it makes any sense. I also like that Chad did do one thing in this movie. He caught a piece of debris that was going to fall and hit everybody. So good for you, Chad. You managed to do something in this movie, which is probably more than you did in the you know, thousand year plug war arc. But overall, I honestly, unless you're a hardcore Bleach fan and are just curious, I wouldn't recommend this movie. It's not very good. I mean, it's better than Dragon Ball Evolution and the FMA movie, if that's saying anything with it really isn't. It's a step in the right direction, but it's a very small step, and it's still not very good. But overall, honestly, I think it's like a 4 out of 10. It's a little below average. It's not the worst thing ever. It's no Dragon Ball Evolution, but it's still pretty bad. I mean, my main source of enjoyment from this movie was really laughing at how bad it was. Like, there were some scenes in this movie that made me burst out laughing hysterically, that it was so bad. But it didn't, like, offend me to an extreme degree, like Dragon Ball Evolution and the FMA movie did. So yeah, 4 out of 10, don't recommend. Also, I'm thinking about starting a blog channel. Let me know if you're interested in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, leave it a like. Tell me your thoughts on the movie in the comment section down below if you've seen it. Subscribe for anime, manga, and superhero comic book content. Follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description box down below. And above all else, guys, have a great day.